Have you ever known your narcissist to have any relative period of calmness, of peace, of any type of serenity, any relative period of where they did not have drama in their lives? Bet you didn't. Or at least I didn't. From my earliest memories, I can always remember my narcissist had to have something of drama going on. And if they didn't, they caused it. With, of course, me, the scapegoat. They never have a moment of peace. They're uncomfortable with it. They crawl out of their skin. If they cannot be on the attack, they cannot be on the aggressive defensive. After I made recontact, after no contact of 25 years, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard when somebody's name came up or another couple's name came up, the response would be, oh, we're not talking to so-and-so because and some just whacked out story. Over and over again, it was the same story. They have to have drama in their lives. The only time a narcissist will have a positive spin on something, something that may make someone else that's not present or even present seem to be happy or good in the context is when they are baiting, when they need something, when they want something. Otherwise, they're going to make it a drama-filled event. Why is that? It comes down to the number one rule. Narcissists always need supply. They cannot live without it. They cannot be comfortable in their own skin without it. They have to have the drama. But here is the key for you and I. Do not get involved in the drama. Do not feed into it. Do not say why would happen. Do not say, well, I think that maybe they were right because, because that will turn on an instant for you. And that will, again, give that narcissist more supply, more reason, more injury, more rage, just supply all around. I thought about this this last week, and I, I just, I can't explain how many times I have heard the expression, well, we're not talking to them because. Let me give you one example if you have time. Before I reestablished contact, and I was in contact with the golden child, of course, because there was no triangulation then, um, the golden child had his floors retiled, had the carpet lift up and retiled. Well, he was in contact with his mother, the narcissist, and the narcissist had, ironically, a friend that owned a tile and carpet company. This friend did the, the tile job for the golden child. Well, there was something wrong with the floor, says the golden child. There was a little piece of one tile that was up a little bit too high. So what did the golden child do? He disputed the charge on his credit card. And this was a friend of the narcissist. This turned into a major, major issue. And what did the narcissist do? They, of course, took sides with the golden child. And here it comes. Well, we're not speaking to them because they did such a terrible job on the golden child's floor. It's always a drama. There's never a peace. There's never any type of 
serenity in the air, it always has to be something. And sure enough, with every visit, with every phone call, with any conversation you have, there'll be a bit of drama included in that. And with that bit of drama, what they're doing is they're feeding their own supply. They're letting you know that someone else is bad. They're letting you know that they are good and someone else is bad. And they are encouraging and fishing for your supply in order for you to tell them, wow, you're right, that is messed up, that is bad. Don't go for it. You don't have the proper context. You can never believe the narcissist. Remember, if the narcissist's, narcissist's lips are moving, they are lying. Don't go into, the, into the, um, the trap of the drama. What you'll be doing is you will be feeding their supply. And that will eventually turn around and bite you in the butt somehow. It'll turn out you're going to be the 